Yeah, you can use the purple one. Mail was really. Uh, no kick, no drilling. Yeah, I hope it's not like that. I'm just going to lay down the hole and I'll do It's an honor to be in the Lord's house tonight. Amen. I want y'all to know that He hears and answers prayer. Amen. Yes, He does. And that we're, we're testimony of that. Us being here in the house of the Lord, you look around at all the people that's here tonight. We're here by the grace of God. Amen. All right, let's see. Uh, we're in Exodus chapter 9 tonight. We're going to go through three more of the plagues. And uh, it's I good. I hate Melvin's going to miss this. Ma'am? I hate Melvin's going to miss this. I know. I was talking to Melvin before I got here. He said he was half tempted to come. <laughs> I said, I love you, brother. I'm going to miss you. <laughs> All right, so chapter 9, we a little backpedal here. We know that Moses has went before Pharaoh several different times now at this point. Uh, we're getting to the fifth plague. So we've already seen the water turn to blood. We've seen the flies. Uh, hold on. The water turn to blood. We've seen the frogs. We've seen the lice. And we've seen the flies. Amen? Yeah. So that's the four that we went into. And uh, every third plague, God doesn't warn Pharaoh, okay? So he'll do two plagues, and then God will just roll out the third one, amen? And uh, I thought that was kind of interesting. Now, tonight I want to, I want you to really look at Pharaoh tonight. I know that we, we really focus through the lens of looking at the uh, plagues and the significance to the plagues and the land and the gods that they were touching. But I want you to consider Pharaoh tonight. And uh, as we go into this first plague of chapter 9, which is the fifth plague, this will be the sixth time that Pharaoh's heart has become hardened. Amen. And uh, we see that so prevalent today in church as we come to the house of the Lord, hear the word of God. We walk out the same way that we come in with our heart just a little harder. Amen. Mm -hmm. So let's consider Pharaoh and his heart tonight. And uh, also I want to look at Moses and his responses to what's happening here. You know, he'll go in. He'll see Pharaoh. Pharaoh will tell him what he's going to do. Moses will tell him what God's getting ready to do. And then his heart is hardened after the plague comes through. And then Moses goes right back to God every single time. Whether or not he... Uh, it's a positive note with God. He still goes to God. Amen? Amen. So let's just let's jump right in here. Chapter 9, verse 1. Then the Lord said unto Moses, Go in unto Pharaoh and tell him, Thus saith the Lord God of the Hebrews, Let my people go that they may serve me. Now in the previous chapter, when Moses went in to Pharaoh, he told him, he said, Let my people go. And Pharaoh said, Go out in the land and worship. Now, we have a problem with that because, you know, they worship cattle. Amen? And the Israelites were going to sacrifice cattle and sheep and goats. Amen? Mm -hmm. The next time, he said, you can go out, but don't go very far. Right. So Pharaoh was putting a leash on them. Right. You see what I'm saying? And now we're going to move in here again and the first thing in chapter 9 is just the Lord speaking to Moses. Amen? So before we do anything, before we take another step, before we take an, our next breath as far as moving forward in our own life, no matter what that looks like for you as an individual, you better be hearing from the Lord. Amen? Amen. See, without Moses hearing from the Lord and having a commission from God, he couldn't stand before Pharaoh and tell Pharaoh anything. That's right. It had to be straight from the throne of God. Hey, you're my man. I sent you here. I'm putting you in this place to give this direct message to a certain person. Amen? Amen. Now, when you stand in front of people and you give God's message, it's a meaning behind it. It's a meaning that you're supposed to be there. It's a significance that you're talking to that person. Amen? Yes. It was significant that Moses was talking to Pharaoh. Amen? Pharaoh had a hard heart. He was ruler of the greatest nation at this time period. Come on, y'all. He was, he was the man, all right? And then Moses rolls in and says, you're going to let my people go because God said Amen. so. Now, Moses had no authority on his own, but when he had been in the presence of God, 
that give him the authority. Yes. And that's what we need tonight. So before I can stand up and preach, I need to hear from the Lord. Yes. Before Susan comes in here on Sunday morning and lays down the law. Come on. Can I get an amen for Susan in the house tonight? Amen. When she comes in, she lays down the law on Sunday. She has had to hear from God speaking into her life about what she needs to tell the people. Right. Same thing here with Moses. So before you take another step as far as ministry or whatever that looks like on a personal level, level on each one of your lives, hear from God and take the time to seek him. Amen. Amen. All right. He said, let my people go that they may serve me. For if thou refuse to let them go and will hold them still, behold, the hand of the Lord is upon thy cattle, which is in the field. Upon the horses, upon the asses, upon the camels, upon the oxen, and upon the sheep, there shall be a very grievous murrain. And the Lord shall sever between the cattle of Israel and the cattle of Egypt, and there shall nothing die of all that is the children of Israel. Okay, so verse 3, it says, Behold, the hand of the Lord is upon. All right, in the plagues, we see an escalation of severity in the plagues. Amen? In other words, they get worse as the more plagues come on. Amen? Amen? So the first plagues was kind of like a pest to the Egyptians. They turned the water into blood. Yeah, the fish died, but it, it that was a, a after effect of the plague. It wasn't actual death on something. Amen? Then you have the frogs which were a pest, and then the lice and the, the flies. It's all a pest to living. Amen? But here, the hand of God is moved upon the animals, and he's going to start to bring death in certain things. Amen? So it says that the hand of the Lord is upon thy cattle. Last verse, not verse, last chapter, when he turned the dust into lice, Amen? The magicians come in and they said, what? We can't do this. This is the finger of God. Amen? See, God had his finger on it before. He was just doing a little bit. But now God's about to put his hand on it. Come on, y'all. He's about to put his hand on it. And when God puts his hand on it, have you ever had somebody jerk you up? Come on, let's be honest. Well, I have. Amen. Mm -hmm. I've had my daddy jerk me up. I'm sure my granny's jerked me up a time or two. Amen. Can I get an amen in the house of the Lord? <laughs> amen. They jerk you in, come in, grab you by the collar, and jerk you in real close and give you a good talking to. If you're lucky, you just get a talking to. Come on, y'all. Well, God is about to put his hand on Pharaoh, mm -hmm. on that Egypt, and he's going to jerk him in real close and he's going to let them know just who he is. That's amen. Right. He said, All of your cattle. All of your sheep, camels, everything that's in the field, it's going to die because you won't let my people go. This is Moses before Pharaoh telling them exactly what's going to happen. He said it's going to be a pestilence. It's going to be a plague that comes on your cattle, and I'm going to kill them all in the field. They're going to drop dead. But he said for my people, ain't none of them going to be affected. Amen. Ain't not one. Y'all like that right there, didn't you? Ain't not one of them cattles out there going to be hurt. Come on. He's going to look over in the Israelite camp. We still going to have all of our sheep. We going to have all of our goats. We going to have all of our cows walking around. Come on, y'all. So when God said, hey, I'm about to touch them, he meant business. Yes. Now look at verse 5. And the Lord appointed a set time, saying, tomorrow the land, tomorrow the Lord shall do this thing in the land. And the Lord did that thing. On tomorrow. And all the cattle of Egypt died. But. Of the cattle of the children of Israel. Died not one. Now why did he touch. The cattle. In Egyptian culture. We're going to talk about the God of the cattle. And her name. Was Hathor what you call it, H-A-T-H-O-R, and she was a goddess. This goddess, she had more temples in the land of Egypt than any other goddess. She had more, more temples in that land 
she was also a god of fertility. Amen. Now, remember, if we go back and we look at all the other gods that the Lord touched through these plagues, uh, most of them had something to do with fertility. Now, what is Exodus about? The birth of a nation. Amen. So here's Hathor. She was depicted as a cow. Come on. That's what she was depicted in in Egyptian hieroglyphics. When they drew her little picture, come on, it was either a woman with a cow head or just a whole cow. Now, there were other gods that was showed as symbolism of a cow, but she was the most prevalent one and had more temples to her than anyone else. So they prayed to her during childbirth. Come on, that they could conceive and bring forth, just like some of those other gods. Amen? Can I get an amen in the house of the Lord? Amen? So when God touched the cattle, he was showing, hey, this little princess that y'all got, she ain't nothing when my hand comes forth. Amen. amen? And all of their cattle dropped dead in the field. Imagine that. And he did it at a set time. See, there was no way Pharaoh could say, oh, well, this such and such thing happened or this was just a, a disease that come through and, and spread out and it was COVID-19 he couldn't say that come on y'all supposed to give me an amen in here for that one amen they all dropped dead and then it says that none of the cattle of Israel died and then look what Pharaoh does and Pharaoh sent and behold there was not one of the cattle of the Israelites dead so Moses went in and said, if you don't let my people go, my hand of God, God's hand is going to come and he's going to touch your cattle. What was significant, significant about the cattle? It was their God. Amen? Amen. And not only that, is they ate several things here. He's touching the whole land. Not only is it touching the cattle, but it's touching all of the other gods. And he's saying, look, you're praying to this woman, this goddess, who has no power. Amen? Has no power. Jesse, that woman, that goddess, ain't got a, a, a little bit of power. I touched these cows in this field, but the cows in this field is still good. The cows over here, they all done died, but the cows over here in Goshen, they still walking around chewing the cud. Come on, y'all. They still walking around on the hook. Amen? Amen. Right. And, and, and what you're praying to as far as going to birth a nation or birth a people or, or bring in fertility, my hand is what brings the true birth. Right. My Amen. hand is what's going to bring my people out the birth of a whole nation. Amen. And as we go today, Israel is still a nation. Amen? Amen. Come on, y'all. And the heart of Pharaoh was hardened, and he did not let the people go. Now, verse 8. Now, this is the sixth plague. So God's not giving a warning here. You look at that. It says, And the Lord said unto Moses and unto Aaron, Take to you handfuls of ashes of the furnace, and let Moses sprinkle it toward the heaven in the sight of Pharaoh. And it shall become small dust in all the land of Egypt, and shall be a bull breaking forth with blains upon man and upon beast throughout all the land of Egypt. See, Pharaoh didn't know what was getting ready to happen, but God's man did. That's right. And see, when we're walking with the Lord, God will reveal things to us that he doesn't reveal to everybody else. Right. Amen? Amen? Why? To show the glory that he has. That's right. It's not for us. Amen? I take no part in God's glory because I'm nothing. But I give him all the glory that is to be had because he's everything. Amen? Amen? Amen. So when he told Moses and Aaron about what was getting ready to happen and didn't tell Pharaoh, that was to show, hey, these people right here are set apart. These people right here, it's something different about yes. them. Amen? Amen? So when you walk into a room somewhere, there's a light shining in you. Amen? Amen? There's something, you've been in the presence of the Lord, the Lord's been speaking to you, and you have authority that the rest of the world doesn't have. So when you walk in into a place, uh, there's something different from you. Amen? That's there's right. something different radiating and beating that's 
inside of you that's not inside of everybody else. So when Moses and Aaron showed up uh, under Pharaoh and had the word of the Lord that no one else in the whole world knew, come on, y'all, and they stood up and spoke in authority, say, hey, uh, God's getting ready to show up. He took in, he reached in that furnace and grabbed those ashes and... Whoosh, Amen? Turned into bulls. Now look, the, the fifth plague touched the cows, but now he's touching man. Yeah. Right. Amen? Amen? He's touching man. He's not playing games anymore. He's showing, hey, I said and I'm doing. Amen? Amen? It said that he took the ashes of the furnace and Moses sprinkled it toward the heaven in the sight of Pharaoh, and it shall become dust in all the land of Egypt, and shall be a bull breaking forth with blains upon man and upon beast throughout all the land of Egypt. Now you say, why did he do, why did he reach in the furnace and grab the ashes? What, what does the ashes have to do with anything? Amen. Some commentaries read that when Moses reached in and grabbed the ashes, that it was the ashes where they did human sacrifices unto these gods. Now that's some of the commentary. So when he reached in and he grabbed those ashes and he laid them up towards heaven and it turned into bulls on man, it was a recompense or a, a after effect of what they had been doing to the human race. So it became down on them. Now other commentaries read that it was from the brazen furnace where the Israelites had been making bricks. Amen? Now you say, which one was it? I don't know. Amen? But I know this. When he reached his hand in there and he let it out, it became bulls on man. That's, right. that's no doubt about it. Right. Amen? Right. No matter what the commentary say, that's what the word of God says. So he reached in and bulls broke out on man. And it says, they took ashes of the furnace and stood before Pharaoh, and Moses sprinkled it up toward heaven, and it became a bull breaking forth with flames upon man and upon beast. Now there's two different gods in this portion right here that the bulls have an effect on. The first one, the god is called Set, and he was the god of the desert and foreigners. Wow. So Israel was a foreign nation inside of Egypt, under bondage, Set was provident, prevalent, excuse me, I'm trying to use my big words. Set was prevalent during the time of Ramses. He was a major god of the Delta region up there where the Nile River branches out at the top of Egypt. He was a great God at the at that point in time. So when God said, hey, I'm going to touch uh, the furnace uh, and it's going to the ashes is going to become bulls. He was touching the God of the, of the foreigners and the God of the desert. He was believed to, to breathe breaths of fire. You see what I'm saying? Set, the God was. So when God touched that, he was touching him. Amen? And there was another God called Sekhemet, which was a goddess of plagues and diseases. Yes, sir. Amen? So when those bulls broke out on human flesh, they had literally, the cows had just died from a disease. So no doubt, they was praying to this God, saying, Lord, rend us of this plague and this disease that's come on the cattle. See what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And then... When Moses sprinkled the ashes in the air, it became bulls on man, so he's touching all of them. So two gods here, he's and took down. Amen? Amen? Now look at verse 11. And the magicians could not stand before Moses because of the bulls. For the bulls was upon the magicians and upon all the Egyptians. Upon the magicians and upon all of the Egyptians. Amen? So the magicians, this was the fourth instance there mentioned. They come in three times, right? The first two times, they could do the same things that the Moses and Aaron did, right? The third time, they said, this is the finger of God. We can't turn the dust into lights, and we can't turn lights back into dust. They couldn't do it. This time, they couldn't even stand before the man of God. Amen? Amen. Amen. Moses and Aaron in there, they good. 
Hey, they standing in there with their little pole, their rod of God, amen, and, and, and the word from the Lord. And here's the magicians. They couldn't even stand before them. The same enemies that come in in your life, come on, y'all, the same ones that's been yes. there time and time and time again running that mouth, uh, I want you to know that God's going to take them down. Uh, he's going to take them down. They won't even be able to stand before you, yes. praise God. Amen. As long as you are in covenant with God, uh, your heart's right with Him, uh, and you've been walking and talking with Him, uh, and you're living in the authority that He has given you, your enemies can't stand before yes. you, praise Amen. God. Uh, why? Amen. Because He is for us, uh, and if He is for us, who can be against us? Come on, y'all. No weapon formed against us shall prosper. Hallelujah to the left. I done went to preaching. Come on, y'all. Amen? Say, so, in short, what did he do? He put the knockout on these magicians. He put, he KO'd them. Huh? He KO'd he them. He done took the gloves off and went bare knuckle on them. He done put them hands on them, Todd. Amen? Come on, y'all. They were staying in. They come in. They did all their stuff. This time, they couldn't even get out of bed. Couldn't even roll out of bed. They was in there scraping their set with them bulls as it broke open. Come on, y'all. Amen? And what does verse 12 say? The Lord hardened the heart of Pharaoh, and he hearkened not unto them as the Lord had spoken unto Moses. Here we see again. He's got another chance. One more chance. But his heart had to be hardened. Why? Because all the firstborn had to die. See, Israel was the birth of a nation. God calls Israel his firstborn. Israel is his firstborn. If you go into the New Testament, it says to the Jew first and also to the Gentile. It's to the Jew first. Amen. It's to Israel first. His promises are for Israel first. Tonight, as a church and as a whole, we stand with Israel. Amen. That's God's chosen people. And we are adopted. We are grafted in to the family of God to walk hand in hand with them. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord. So he had another opportunity, but he didn't take it. All right, let's keep moving. And the Lord said unto Moses, rise up early in the morning. And stand before Pharaoh and say unto him, Thus saith the Lord God of the Hebrews, Let my people go, that they may serve me. So here we go. Moses is back in front of the Lord. Amen. Talking with God. And then he says, Go in and tell Pharaoh. So here we have the, which plague is this? This is the seventh plague, and he's giving them a warning again. Remember, it's every third plague he gives no warning. Amen? And it says, For I will at this time send all my plagues upon thine heart, and upon thy servants, and upon thy people, that thou mayest know that there is none like me in all the earth. For now I will stretch out my hand, that I might smite thee and thy people with pestilence, and thou shalt be cut off from the earth. And in very deed for this cause have I raised thee up, for to show in thee my power, and that my name may be declared throughout all the earth. Amen? That's the reason Pharaoh's heart had to be hardened all these times. It was because God, he's saying, I'm stretching forth my hand, and I'm going to show you. He said, to show in thee my power. Amen? So all of these things that we go through in life, they're to show God's power. That's right. Amen? Amen? All that time that I was hooked on drugs, all those pills, Todd, that was a testimony for you to stand up in the house of God and say, hey, I was addicted, I was this, I was down and out, come on. But Jesus Christ rolled through and set me free and the chains fell off, hallelujah, that his glory will be famed all throughout the land, all over the earth to the four corners and beyond from now throughout eternity. It was the hand of God that done it. It was not a man. Amen. See, they were scared of Moses and Aaron, but it was really the one that was behind them. Amen. As I stand here tonight, uh, you might not be scared of me, and I hope you're not. Come on, y'all. But you know what? Uh, When the hand of God gets in it, uh, things is going to happen. When the hand of God uh, stretches forth, uh, and he, come on, y'all, when he puts that hand on it, uh, things are going to happen. Glory be to God. He said, I'll stretch out my hand, and I'll smite thee and thy people. He said, you're going to let my people go to show in thee my power 
that my name may be declared throughout all the earth. What's his name? Jehovah God. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. Yahweh. They was like, Yahweh. I was like, Yahweh. <laughs> As yet exaltest thou thyself against my people that thou will not let them go. Behold, tomorrow about this time, I will cause it to rain a very grievous hail, such as hath not been in Egypt since the foundation thereof, even until now. Now, I was looking at this, and I was wondering about that text about when Egypt was actually, had became a nation. Amen? And Egypt dates way on back before 3100 B.C. And if you go even further and believe that the world has been here for how many ever billion years, they found that there is evidence of them being here 100,000 plus. So I don't know when the nation of Israel, uh, Egypt was erected, but I know this. When God said that there has never been a hell like this getting ready to fall, that's what he meant. Right. Amen. And let's read a little bit further. Send therefore now and gather thy cattle, and all that thou hast in the field, for upon every man and beast which shall be found in the field, and shall not be brought home, the hail shall come down upon them, and they shall die. Mm. So here, the first, the fifth plague, he touched the cattle of pestilence, they dropped dead in the field. He's warning them here. Amen. He said, go get your cattle out the field, because there's coming a hail, and when the hail comes down, anything that's in the field, whether beast or man, it's going to die. Amen. So he's touched the cattle. He's touched men in their flesh. And now he's going to touch them with a great hell that comes down in fire. For he that feared the word of the Lord among the servants of Pharaoh made his servants and his cattle flee into the house. And he that regarded not the word of the Lord left his servants and his cattle in the field. Now here we see some people starting to believe, hey, there's something going on with this God of Moses and Amen. Amen. I don't know about y'all, but if I was an Egyptian at this point in time, I think I'd be out in the field gathering up all my mess into the barn. Amen? So some of them went out, uh, and they had heard the word of the Lord spoken through Moses and Aaron, uh, and they did exactly what the man said, but some did not. Now, if you was a leader or a man in Egypt and had slaves, and they were out in the field, they would die. Amen? And the word of God said, And he that regardeth not the word of the Lord left his servants and his cattle in the field. So on someone else's sin and hard heart, others were killed in the field as servants. Now, how many of us has ever said, Well, this is my little sin. It ain't hurt nobody but me. Come on. Amen. I said it myself. Amen. But you know what? When you sin... You hurting everyone around you. You hurting your family. You hurting your friends. You hurting the people. Especially if you're going to church. You hurting the church. You hurting the pastor. Most of all, you're hurting God Almighty because you call yourself a Christian. You call yourself a man or a woman of God, and then you get out here and you do this, 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 and this. Come on, y'all! And it brings a reproach on the church, on the ministry, on God Himself, on you and your family. And not only does it bring that, but it brings a curse. Amen. What was wrong with this here? They was going to die in the field because someone else uh, wouldn't hearken unto the word of the Lord. Amen. What in your life is dying around you because you wouldn't listen to the word of God? Right. Amen. We've had that happen. Right. Come on. We we commit sin. We we go against the word of God and we look around and things start happening. How many of you has ever not paid your tithes like you should? Come on. Come on I can talk about that because I'm not the preacher here. Amen? Come on, y'all. You didn't pay your tithes? Oh, well, this will be all right. Wash machine go out. Amen? You, you know, you're driving down the road, guess what happens? You get a tire in your, a, a nail in your tire. You say, no, it ain't like that. Yes, it is. What's God's is God's. Amen? When you commit sin and go against God, things are going to happen because his hand of protection see, God couldn't protect those servants in the field. Why? Because the word of the Lord had been spoken. Amen? He was in covenant with Moses. He told him, he'd give him a rule. He literally told him, if you're in the field, when this hell comes down, you will die. Amen? Amen? 
We're told time and time again of all the rules, all of the laws of God, all of the, the spiritual concepts of what we should do as man and woman, as children of the king. Amen? Yes. And we go against the word of God, and then we wonder why our lives are in a mess. Amen. We put ourselves there. You put yourself in the middle of the field. Amen? Come on, y'all. All right, verse 22. And the Lord said unto Moses, Stretch forth thine hand toward Egypt, I mean toward heaven, that there may be hail in all the land of Egypt upon man and upon beast and upon every herb of the field throughout the land of Egypt. And Moses stretched forth his rod toward heaven, and the Lord sent thunder and hail, and the fire ran along upon the ground. And the Lord rained hail upon the land of Egypt. So there was hail and fire mingled with the hail, very grievous, such as there was none like it in all the land of Egypt since it became a nation. Amen? Amen. Now look, it said there was hail and fire raining down. Now some interpret that as be lightning. Amen? Amen. I believe it was. I believe it was raining. I believe a, a storm come over that whole nation of Israel. I mean, Egypt. I'm sorry. I believe that there was just this big storm cloud, this big black cloud, Todd, come through there. And it was lightning. And it was thundering. And it was looking scary. And it was pouring down the rain. Come on. And then this hail started coming down. And it was thundering. And it was lightning. And not only was it raining, hailing, thundering, and lightning, but fire come down. How you get fire and hell at the same time? That's God's hand. Come on, y'all. That's God's hand. Fire and hell at the same time. And I want you to know that everybody that was in the field, they died. All the cattle that was in the field, they died. Not only did the cattle and the people, but every tree was broken. Come on, y'all. All the crops that they had in the ground, it was beat down. It says, and the hell smoked throughout all the land of Egypt. All that was in the field, both man and beast, and the hail smote every herb of the field and break every tree of the field. Only in the land of Goshen, where the children of Israel were, was there no hail. Have y'all been driving and it's been raining real hard? And you'll be driving along the road and you can see where the rain stops. Y'all ever seen that? Imagine that. Imagine it's hail and fire and brimstone over here. Come on, y'all. Fire and hail and uh, uh, electricity. Come on. It's just doing It's doing the most over here. But we look over here where the Israelites are, where God's chosen people was. They walking around singing, glory be to God. <laughs> Amen. Come on. You see what I'm saying? They having a good old time. Amen. They walking around. They're watching the judgment of the wicked. From an exalted place. Huh? Come on. They're watching the judgment of the wicked from an exalted place. Even inside of the, come on, Egypt's land. So you can be walking right in the middle of the place where God said, I'm going to destroy it. Come on. And you can literally be watching a thousand might fall at your side. Come on, y'all. But the word of God is here to stay. And as long as we're standing on the word, as long as we're walking in the light of the word, we can look around and see all of the enemy, all of the evil, all of the things. It's going down. But as we're walking, we got the light shining. Come on. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Hallelujah. I'm going to let it go out. And everywhere I go, it's going to be blessed. Yes. Why? Because everywhere the sole of my footsteps, uh, huh, come on, y'all, yes. it's a covenant relationship with God. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. It's a covenant relationship with God that I'm blessed. I'm highly favored. I'm going to prosper. I'm going to be in good health yes. uh, as my soul prospers, like we were just talking about. Uh, and I'm going to watch uh, the fall of the enemy. I'm going to watch uh, the fall of the ones. Uh, the enemy that thinks he's got you just so tight, uh, he's going to have to let loose. Uh, yes. He's going to have to let go. Uh, and not only is he going to let go, but God's going to take him down. Yes. Yeah. Woo, hallelujah. Right. Man, that makes me happy. Yes. I get happy in the Lord. Now, verse 27, let's look at Pharaoh here. And Pharaoh sent and called for Moses and Aaron and said unto him, unto them, I have sinned this time. Pharaoh never said this before. His heart had got hard. He'd walked off. 
Amen. He told them he'd do this, and then when they got out of the gate, he'd turn his back on them and say, no, we're going to do it this way, my way. Amen. Mo uh, Moses went in time and time again and told him what was going to happen, but Pharaoh never said this before. This is the first time. On the seventh plague, he said, I have sinned. Not only did he say, I have sinned, the Lord is righteous. And I and my people are wicked. Ooh, man, that old hard heart of Pharaoh. God's creeping in just a little bit at a time. But you know what it took? It took the Lord to take his hand and jerk him up close and say, hey, you going to listen here, old boy. I'm the man around here, and ain't none of these gods that you got. To, ain't nothing good with them. I'm God. I'm the Almighty. I'm the Alpha and the Omega. I'm the Creator. I'm the beginning and the end. And nothing you got and nothing you can say or nothing you can pray to is going to help you anyway in this time. You better hit your knees and you better cry out to me. And Pharaoh said, I have sinned this time. Your God is righteous and we wicked. Amen. He showed him who he really was. He broke the mirror out. 28 says, entreat the Lord for it is enough. I've had enough that there be no more mighty thunderings and hail. I will let you go and you shall stay no longer. In other words, I'm going to let you go and I want you to go right now. <laughs> Amen. Get out. You done killed all of our cattle. You done broke us out in bulls. You done had our servants die out in the field. And all the cattle that was left out there and all of the sheep and all that, they died too. And not only did you do that, but you done broke down all of the trees. Our crops is gone. Come on, all the herbs of the field has been beat up. And he says, I'm going to let you go. And you're going right now. Amen. Now look at verse 29. And Moses said unto him, As soon as I am gone out of the city, I will spread abroad my hands unto the Lord, and the thunder shall cease. Neither shall there be any more hell, that thou mayest know how that the earth is the Lord's. Amen. The earth is the Lord's. <laughs> I created this earth. Right. Amen. I spoke it into existence on the six days of creation. Come on. I'm telling you. Now the God of these bowl of the hell. They had another god. It was called Nut or Nut. I, I'm not sure how you pronounce it. But she was the goddess of the sky. They believed her body was the sky. And that the stars and the sun and all that moved across her body each and every day. Amen. And God touched the sky and said, hey, I'm in control of it. I'm in control of the sky. I'm in control of the sun, the earth, the moon, the stars, everything that's in it. I own the cattle in your fields and the Israelites' field. Everything that pertains to this world is mine because I created it. Amen. 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 It says, look here. All right, verse 30. But as for thee and thy servants, I know that ye will not yet fear the Lord God. Because God had already told Moses in chapter 4 that I'm going to harden, harden Pharaoh's heart. And he's not going to let you go. And the flax and the barley was smitten, for the barley was in the ear, and the flax was boiled. But the wheat and the rye were not smitten, for they were not grown up. All right, now what? why does he bring this out? Okay, so flax is what they use for linen. That's what they made their clothes out of. So all of the Egyptian priests, they had on linen clothes that was made out of flax. Amen? So when he smote the herb of the field, not only was he smiting the food that they was going to eat for their body, but he was also touching the clothes that they had on their backs. Amen. Come on, y'all. Amen? Now, when the Israelites get out into the wilderness, God keeps their sandals. They walk around in the wilderness for how many years, Nanny? And how many times did their sandals wear out? Not one. They want that Foot Locker buying some new Air Force Ones. Come on, y'all. Amen. They, they didn't have to go down to the Walmart and get some knockoff Crocs. Come on, y'all. They put on their daggone uh, sandals, and they walked out into the field, and they lasted for 40 years plus. That's my God. But he touched the Egyptians' clothes all the way down. The, not not just the skin and the bulls, but the clothes they had on their backs. Yes. That's amazing. Amen. 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 
this also showed us what time it was of the year. Okay, so the barley was in the air and the flax was boiled. And you remember in the in the uh, first plague, I was telling you about that there was three different cycles. Amen. It was the cycles around the river, the Nile River, where it was flooded over. Then you had the time of planting and the time of harvest. Now, this was called the time of Peret, and that was in the second part. Amen. So I'm thinking, if I remember right, it was around March is when this was. And then the last part, it says, But the wheat and the rye were not smitten, for they were not grown up. And they are come to produce in the months. It was three months, the third cycle, which was Shemu. I guess I'm, I think I'm saying that right, Shemu. So not only was he touching their clothes, but he was also giving us a timeline of kind of when this is happening, amen, in Egypt and why. All right, verse 33. And Moses went out of the city from Pharaoh and spread abroad his hands unto the Lord, and the thunders and hail ceased, and the rain was not poured upon the earth. And when Pharaoh saw that the rain and the hail and the thunders were ceased, he sinned yet more, and hardened his heart, he and his servants. Now, see, it never said that before in all the other plagues. It never said that he sinned again. Mm -hmm. But see, now Pharaoh knows that this is sin. That's right. You see what I'm saying? He brings it out and shows, and he confesses himself that this is sin unto God, that God is righteous and we're wicked. So when he hardens his heart this time, it means a little more than, oh, I just, I ain't going to do what you tell me to do, and I'm going to walk off, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be in my little kingly robe. Amen? Amen? So this time, he knows that it was sin, and God sees it as sin, and he said his heart and his servants. See, his servants had people in the field that died. Their heart got hardened too. Amen? Now look at verse 35. And the heart of Pharaoh was hardened. Neither would he let the children of Israel go as the Lord had spoken by Moses. So after eight plagues, seven plagues, he still is not letting his people go. Amen? Time and time again, he's had opportunity the man of God, the two men of God has come in and told him exactly what was going to happen. And down to a T, it happened exactly like they said it was. And he still won't believe. And we do the same thing in the house of the Lord. Amen. Amen. We, we get the gospel presented to us and we hear the word of the Lord and, and we have an understanding. And we know what sin is and what it ain't. And we know the way that we should be walking. But instead, our heart gets hard. Because we like doing what we want to do. Yeah. Amen? Amen? We want to do what we like to do, what feels good and it's convenient for us. Right. Amen? Amen? And then it becomes sin in our heart. And that's just one more thing we got to deal with. When all we got to do is say, Lord, forgive me. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. And walk according to his word. Amen. And he'll bless us. Amen? Amen? I love you tonight and I appreciate you. Remember to pray for Danny and Susan as she takes care of them. All the ones that are sick, we need to hold them up in prayer. Uh, remember the church as a whole. Amen. That God would flourish it yes. and send souls for a higher. Amen. Amen. To preach the gospel and spread the word of the good news of the things that are to come. Amen. Amen. Yes. I love you tonight, and I'm going to dismiss us in prayer. Lord, I thank you. For one more time in your house, I thank you, Lord God, that I could stand and teach your word. Lord, I just thank you for your word tonight. I'm glad that it's real. Lord, I know that this actually happened, and I believe your word is true. And Lord, I pray right now that you would bless us as we hear and we apply this word to our hearts. I pray a blessing over Clearview Gospel Mission. I ask, Lord God, that you would send a holy anointing on this place, uh, that you would bring it close-knit, Father, than it ever has been before, and that you would touch Danny and Susan as they lead and guide these people in Jesus' name. Lord, I thank you for your mercy and your grace. In Jesus' name I pray, amen and amen.